So let's say you're a judge at a pro or semi-pro cheer or dance team and you are at the judge's table. Let me ask you a question. When you look at that judge's score sheet, what are the categories on the score sheet? And then after you come up with that answer, what do you think are the top two most important areas of focus for the judges? And what I mean by that is which categories are awarded the most points or weighed the most in the overall score? Well, if you watched the video last week, you already know one of the answers. I talked about the importance of having the look of the pro cheer team that you plan to audition for. And in this video, I wanna go into detail about the other item that I feel like ranks in that top two list. along you know that this is part of a video series that I'm doing all around the top 10 terrible audition mistakes that you obviously want to avoid. Last week I talked about audition mistake number six, not having the look of the team. And I mentioned that I felt like this was in the top two list of most important things that you really need to make sure that you nail before your big day. And in this video I want to talk about mistake number seven, not focusing on the dance requirements and the dance style of the team you plan to audition for. Now I always have this inner struggle <laughs> going on about what's more important, dance or your looks? And I don't really think that it matters. I don't really think that there is a number one or a number two. It really does depend on the team. But this in general, I feel like are the top two most important areas of focus. How you present yourself, your overall appearance and your look, and then obviously how you're able to turn it up on the dance floor. So your actual dance style, your performance, your facials, the power with your movement and all of the above, right? So those really are the top two areas that I feel you should focus on. And unfortunately, ladies that are very, let's say for example, beautiful and gorgeous, may not think that the dance aspect is so important. And those ladies that have a really strong technical dance background may not really feel as though the look is important. But I'm here to tell you both are very, very important. So the first thing that I want to suggest to you is to do your research, of course, and find a team in which you would be strong at auditions. And what I mean by that is, for example, if a team is very technically based and you know that you have a lot of strong technique, then that might be a good team for you to audition for. Whereas on the flip side, if you don't have a double pirouette and you're not very strong from a technical standpoint, then maybe pick a team that you don't have to do across the floors during auditions and you don't have to do fuerte turns and everything else. So you really wanna make sure that you find a team where you will show off or highlight your skill set and in which your skill set fits the mold of the requirements of the team. And there is a difference. So you have to really think about the requirements as well as the dance style. So from a requirement standpoint, some teams may require that you do a double turn or a triple turn. Some teams may require more advanced technique. So the way that you find this out is obviously by going on their website and seeing if they have any requirements listed. And then of course you can just look online and look at their performances and see what types of movements and technical skill sets they're doing in their dance routines. And that will obviously give you a huge, huge clue as to what you'll need to perform as well at auditions. So that's part one of this, just making sure that you understand the requirements. And then the other side of this is really making sure that you can fit the mold of the style of the dance. And this is something that, you know, was a lesson learned for me because in all honesty, had I done my research on this, I probably would have auditioned for the Baltimore Ravens cheerleaders. They are very motion driven and have very strong, powerful movements. Most of their sidelines are actual cheers where you're doing high V, low Vs, and a lot of their dances are very sharp and motion based. I have a cheer background. I don't have a dance background. So that probably would have been an area that I would have been strong in as far as an audition standpoint. Now luckily I went to the Redskins auditions and ended up making the team and that's basically because I went to one of their games and absolutely fell in love with the first ladies of football. And I just had my heart set on that was a team that I wanted to audition for. And luckily it all worked out for me. But this is definitely something that you want to think about. 
more of your NFL teams are gonna have less technical requirements versus your NBA teams. They're gonna obviously have more technical requirements and their style of dance is probably gonna be different. So you just have to do your research. If you're strong in hip hop, obviously go with a team that is strong in hip hop and does a lot of hip hop dances. Same thing, if you have a ballet or jazz background, you wanna find a team that has more of that style of dance. So really just making sure that you do your research and that you go to the team in which you can really be strong at auditions for. And another thing to keep in mind, if you have exhausted all of your options in your area, so you've auditioned for a certain team over and over again and it's just not working out for you, who's to say you can't move and that you can't research other teams outside of the area? If you have the capability to do that, why not? So you really just have to ask yourself, is this goal of mine that important that I'm willing to move and dance in another state for another team? And if the answer is yes, then go for it. Don't limit yourself just to the teams in your area. So let me go ahead and get to the meat of what this video is gonna be about. What I wanted to share with you are the ways that you can practice the dance style of the team that you plan to audition for. So once you figure out what the requirements are, and once you figure out what the dance style actually is, then how do you go about practicing it? How do you um, actually ingrain that movement and that style into your muscle memory and into your body? So here are my five tips to do that. Number one, attend prep classes, workshops, and auditions. Yes, I've said it again. <laughs> so obviously the best way to learn the dance style and the requirements of the team is to actually go to the prep classes, the workshops, and then the big day of auditions because they're gonna actually teach you the choreography, they're gonna teach you the across the floor technique that you need, you're, you're gonna go over all of the kick sequences that you need to have. All of that will happen at prep classes and auditions. Now, of course, I'm always telling you that you have to be prepared before prep classes. So if that's the case, then what do you do? How do you actually practice the dance style at that point? So number two, attend a game. Yes, go see them in action or attend a performance or an appearance that they're at. Now, if you're at a game, what I would recommend is that you record them performing, right? So let's say you are at a basketball game, right? So I would recommend sitting on the visitor side. So basically the side where the scores table is because most of the time the cheerleaders or dancers are going to perform toward the home side, meaning that you will see their backs. Now I know that this sounds kind of weird, but the reason I recommend that is because if you can record them from behind, then when you get home, it's gonna be so much easier for you to learn that choreography. Because when they like move their right arm, then you can move your right arm. Whereas if you are recording from the front, if they move their right arm, you're like, wait a minute, was that the left or was that the right arm? And then you get confused and then you have to figure out how to mirror what they're doing. And it just takes a lot longer to learn and practice the choreography. Now, if you are at a football game, you kind of have both the best of both worlds because you can record the ladies on your side because normally they dance in the four corners and they're facing you. And then you can also zoom in on the other side and record the ladies from behind. And I just think that this is really important because the point of recording the video is to go home and then practice the dance style. Teach yourself the routines through those videos. So this really is a great, great way to really understand and know the dance style. And then of course, if you are recording from behind, then you can obviously go on social media, go on their website, and kind of look at their style, their facials, and all of that from the front as well, okay? So next up, tip number three go online. <laughs> so find dances online. So you can obviously visit their website, all of their social media outlets, and just look at those videos and then obviously try to learn the routines and pick up the routines. Again, it is gonna be a little more difficult because you're gonna to have to mirror their movements, but it's better than nothing, right? So go ahead, go online, do your research, go on YouTube, find videos from fans that are in the stands that they've posted and just start learning their choreography and then dancing it full out. Number four, you want to attend dance style like dance classes. So what do I mean by style like dance classes? 
So if the team that you're auditioning for dances mainly hip hop, then make sure that you attend a lot of hip hop dance classes. If they are more jazz and you know that they're very technically based, then go to jazz classes, go to ballet classes to make sure that you have that advanced technique. So again, just making sure that you're attending dance classes that are very similar in style and movement to the team that you plan on auditioning for. Number five, you guessed it, you gotta practice. Practice, practice, practice. So once you've done all of this, once you've attended the prep classes and the workshops or maybe the audition from the prior year and then you've attended games and you've recorded them or maybe appearances and promotions that they're at and you've recorded them and once you have found their dances online and then attended dance classes yourself, then you have to practice the material and you have to practice doing these dances full out. And I would recommend full hair, full makeup in your the shoes that you plan to audition in and really just putting in 110% with learning the, the choreography and then dancing it full out. And one thing to keep in mind is that another kind of huge mistake that kind of falls in with mistake number seven is just not being able to pick up choreography fast enough. So then you get flustered and bothered and frustrated at auditions. Well, if you're doing these things and you're constantly going to dance classes and you're constantly practicing your craft and putting yourself in an environment where you have to pick up choreography on demand, then it's gonna come a lot easier on the actual day of auditions and at prep classes. So please keep that in mind. The more that you take dance classes and the more that you have to learn right there on the spot with other people watching you, it's gonna make your um, attendance and your experience at prep classes and auditions that much more enjoyable. All right, well that is it. That was mistake number seven, not focusing on the dance requirements and the dance style of the team that you want to audition for. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any other suggestions on ways that you can practice the dance style or learn the dance style of the team that you wanna audition for, please be sure to share those comments below. As always, visit us on sidelineprep.com. We have free training and resources there. Follow us on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And of course, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that as soon as we post a live video, a new video, you can actually see it immediately. All right, that is all for now. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed rest of your day, and I will see you on the other side. Bye.